Hey, this is Sart today with Mythic MTG Tech number 352, looking at artist proofs or backlist cards. This is a topic that I thought was going to take me about five minutes to do a video on, and the more research I did, the more I found out that there are are a lot of misconceptions about these cards and not a lot of great resources that bring together all of the knowledge about these cards. So this is really meant to be kind of a comprehensive resource for early artist proofs. If you want a preview of the things that I'm talking about on this channel, definitely check out my Instagram. The response that I got to the posting of the Artist Proof Lightning Bolt is what really motivated me to do this particular video. So what is an Artist Proof? An Artist Proof is a card that Wizards of the Coast basically made to give artists a way to show off their work and also to see the coloring and the final outcome of what the cards would look like. Artist Proofs have been around since the beginning of Magic, although exactly where in that history they come from is up for a lot of debate, and I'm going to cover that a little bit later. Early Artist Proofs were often used as business cards, cards or given away to fans and if you run into artists at a convention it's very easy to get a hold of these usually they sell them for some amount we're going to talk about where you can get those a little bit later big question everybody asks is how many of each artist proof are there the beta or collector's edition ones which are going to be covered in depth here in a moment uh, there's 50 of each the revised are 50 of each the white border foreign and black border foreigns are 50 of each now antiquities legends dark fallen empires have some different numbers and i've had a hard time confirming exactly what those numbers were they are probably slightly higher i am not aware of any artist proofs that were printed larger than that 150 level that is claimed for some of the legends cards it is very very common for artists to also doodle or paint on the back of artist proofs giving them a really interesting unique piece of original art on the back of those cards now are these collector's edition or beta this is a huge area of debate in the community they are clearly not alpha in any way shape or form one way you can tell that is we've got volcanic island although volcanic island could have been printed later uh, they also this first round of artist proofs was printed before they lost the artwork for plateau in the middle there we've got vesuvian doppelgangers from alpha artist proof collector's edition two betas there on the bottom and an international collector's edition where exactly they fall in is not easy to find but i did find in my research this quote that is from the former first magic art director and magic artist that really shows exactly where these artist proofs come from artist proofs were intended to originally come out with alpha but they did not make it into the alpha print run they were printed off the same proofs that beta and collector's edition were at the same time at the end of the beta print run you can call them what you want but the most common thing they're called is beta proofs now there is a little bit of difference between the finish on a beta and a collector's edition card having held both of them and uh, looked at several rebacked collector's edition cards that people are trying to push off as betas you can feel a little bit of difference i have not been able to grab one of these beta proofs and see exactly what that finish was the fact that they're at the end of the beta run and they're cut with those square cut corners gives me a pretty good idea that they may actually have that collector's edition finish but i can't confirm that until i get to look at these really closely the fact that they've got square cut corners are also very unfortunate people hated the square cut corners of the collector's edition and all of the artist proofs after these beta artist proofs have normal 
rounded beta cut corners. Even alpha cards were looked upon very poorly for a period of time because they would stand out in tournaments and some tournaments wouldn't let you play them. The beta cut for a long time was the premier cut in Magic the Gathering. The fact that later artists' proofs have that rounded corner, I think has helped them a little bit, but they weren't that big of a collector's item until just recently. A lot of people have asked me, what is the value of them? And looking at that lightning bolt that I had earlier, that is one of the most common things people have asked me. It is really, really difficult to find the value on these because they are so small print run. There are thousands of lotuses. There are over 4,000 alpha and beta lotuses, over a thousand alpha lotuses. There are fifth beta artist proofs out there almost nothing comparatively this is such a small number out there that we don't have an accurate sample size so what i've got here is one of the last ones that i've seen actually sell as a beta lotus proof uh, it currently is listed over on the alpha beta unlimited website and that is a vendor that i'm very familiar with in fact i used to buy uh, Pokemon from me in the Lloyd Center, Wizards of the Coast store that I used to run under the name Gamekeeper. And this beta was, or beta proof, was listed on your website until 2013. And the asking price in 2013 was about $6,000. At that exact same time, you can see that a near mint unlimited Lotus was about $2,000. A alpha graded lotus was about $25,000, and a played alpha lotus was about $6,000. So the asking price at the time was a little bit less than an alpha lotus. The fact that it's not tournament playable and has the square cut corners has limited the value some of these really early proofs, but more modern proofs have been able to command a much higher price, which makes it very difficult to really determine what the value of these are. Where can you find them? eBay, great source. There's a lot of them there on the uh, best offer, buy it now. But the absolute best place to get these is directly from the artists. A lot of artists have their websites up and you can purchase artist proofs through their websites or if you see them at conventions that is where you're going to get the absolute best deal on these is make cash offers at conventions cards that are not played very often super easy to get very very inexpensive the more playable an artist proof is the more valuable it is even though they are entirely illegal in tournaments people really want them for their edh decks as a piece of history force of will the new one by trace nielsen beautiful artwork that's a piece of magic history and a wonderful card to have as an artist proof you can see that the price that is commanded on her website is much more expensive than an actual force of will there. One of my favorite things about artist proofs is that a lot of the time you can get original artwork from the artist drawn or painted on the back of them. This is awesome. So this is Amy Weber and she put an ornithopter piece of artwork on the back. I would love to have a set of those for a casual deck, for a kitchen table deck, or for a personal collection. Very, very reasonable. Also online at this point, they can be purchased on eBay for about 30 bucks or so. Huge, awesome piece of history. If you want to collect something really cool and very original, I would definitely reach out to artists at Gen Con, at other major GP events, talk to them about artist proofs and have them paint, doodle something on them, not necessarily as an investment, but as an awesome piece of history that really gives you a little bit of a personal connection with these incredible artists out there. To read more about this, definitely check out all of these articles. I spent several hours doing research on this particular video. If there's anything that you think that I got a little bit off, please leave it in the comments. I'm trying to really get to the bottom of artist proofs and let people know more about them as both a collector and as a fan of Magic the Gathering.
What topic would you like to see me cover next? Please leave it in the comments. I'm going to be doing a video next week that comes directly from the comments of this video. Thank you to everybody who's over there supporting the channel and to my channel sponsor, chess.com. Please, if you love this stuff, become a patron. I've got some new reward levels there, including the option of choosing a topic every month. If you want to choose a topic, check out that $100 level. Take a look at the other videos that I've got here and be prepared. You've got an onslaught of commander videos coming, 32 of them, plus some extras. Or the image that you're seeing right here in the middle of the screen, that is from an upcoming video that I've already shot and that I'm editing now. Until next time, choose the cards wisely.